The asset browser can ruin your day in two completely opposite ways. Link your assets wrong and updates just won't propagate. You'll be re-importing everything manually, feeling like you're wasting your time. Link them right, but forget to unlink when you need something unique. Well, congratulations. You've just overwrote every instance across your entire project. Now, let me show you how to avoid both of these nightmares. So before we take a look at using the asset, let's get familiar with it. We have Suzanne here, she's a totem, and she has a party hat, which is also an asset. So this is a compound asset, which is a good test to see what will come across in another blend file. And then finally, we have a top hat asset as well, which we'll be using to swap out with the party hat at some point in the near future. Let's go over to a brand new scene and import this asset. So over in a new blend file, I'm just gonna pull up the timeline with my cursor in the timeline. I'm gonna go Shift and F1, do that a couple of times and we can see our asset list. I'm just gonna lower that down. I only care about the totem. Now, before we go ahead and drag things in, we need to have a look at what the default settings are. You can see at the top here, we've got import setting. So we can change what's happening. And by default, the import method is following preferences. So if we go up to edit and preferences and make sure you're on the file paths, by default, this will be set to pack. We have three options here. We have link, append, and pack. And we'll have a look at what each one of those does over the next few minutes. But we won't be going here all the time. We'll just be using the import settings drop down at the top. Let's just clear our scene so we can bring some things in. I'm gonna click on import settings, follow preferences. I'm gonna change that to link. And we're gonna drag our first totem in, click and drag, drop it in and there we go. This is linked. And if we have a look over in the outliner on the top right, we can see that we've got that chain icon. That means that it is linked. Now, if we go ahead and change this from link to append and click and drag that in, we can see that the actual elements have come in. Isn't that interesting? This is not linked to our previous one at all. I'm also gonna turn on material preview so we can see the colors. This definitely won't update, but this is really useful if you need to bring in a pre-assembled object, perhaps something like a car or a spaceship that's got lots of different assets all combined together. You can then bring it in and then everything is editable, but it's not linked back in any way. So I'm gonna highlight that and delete that. That's really useful when you want to edit things, but not so useful if you want to keep that link to the original asset. Finally, if we go down and do pack, click and drag that in, this comes in slightly differently. We can see here, we've got a totem. And if we drop that down, it's got an instance. In fact, both of these are instances. So if you do need to do what we just did to the append earlier, what we can do at any point with this highlighted is I'm gonna use F3 to search for it. And in fact, there you go, make instances real. If we do that, it does exactly the same thing as we did before with the append. And now all of these are completely unlinked and usable in here. Now, if you have ever used file and link before, for, you used to be able to make things local. And that is slightly different when we're using the asset browser here. So we've got these two ways of working, but there is also a couple of tick boxes here. So we've got this instance collection when linking. Okay. So what happens if we change this back to linking and untick the instance collection and bring that in? What you'll find is nothing happens. And the reason why nothing happens is because the instance is already there and Blender won't bring in another one. This one was linked. So if we go ahead and get rid of that and drag this in, we can see what happens. We actually see a bit more of the detail, the cube, the cylinder, the empty, and Suzanne are all there. They're not editable as such. It looks like you can potentially move things, but you need to do a library override in order to do that. So I'm not gonna do that just at this moment. I'm going to go back and have it as a when linking, we want it to have an instance of that collection. Of course, if we click and drag that in, now notice the linked object that we had before has disappeared and it's jumped here. Blender knows that this is the same thing. So let's have a look at what happens if we edit the original file, perhaps give Suzanne a different colored hat. Let's see if any of these will update. And if they won't update automatically, how can we make them update? Now for this, I've simply gone to a split screen so we can easily hop between the original and what we have going on here. So I'm gonna get my hat, I'm gonna go down to materials, can't quite see what's going on here, all the way down to materials, and let's make the hat bright red, green, something that's obvious. Green is a good color here to be really obvious and save that. It is important that you save it, otherwise the asset won't update. And when we go over to our scene again, 
well, it's not updated. Well, perhaps we need to save it and then reload it. That's one way that you might approach this. So let's go ahead, save this as a totem test and then reload it. Let's revert, see if anything will reload. And it does. But that's a bit irritating if you had to do that every time an asset was updated. You can do it within Blender itself. But notice the other one at the back did not. So we'll discuss the various options and why that's not happening. But if we make this dual screen again, like so, we can come back in and make another change. Let's make it yellow this time and make sure we save it. And now when we go over to here, what we can do is in our outliner, we can have a look at the Blender file. If we have a look at the Blender file, we can see any libraries that are here. And we have our assets, the totem, the linked file, and we have our assets, the totem, the packed file. So we'll discuss the difference between those in a moment. But let's go ahead, right click on that and reload. Interesting, that's not changed to yellow. It should have done. We'll have a look at why in a moment. But let's go to the assets, the packed assets and reload that. And we can see now that one has updated. In fact, it's disappeared from here. So let's just bring this back across like so. Did this in fact save? That's always the question that I wonder about. I think I used a keyboard shortcut and it just didn't apply. So let's go back into here and reload. Brilliant, both of them have updated. And again, because Blender recognizes these actually come from the same place, both of these now updated. Okay, so let's take a deeper look into what is actually going on under the hood here. And I'm gonna bring in a appended version as well. So we can talk about that at the same time. And I'm gonna pop that one back over there. So what is going on here? As we've already discussed with the append, the asset and all of its dependencies are appended. And this simply means it's copied into our current file. Now, as we saw earlier, when we drag something into the scene, if I do that again and again, because these are all appended, they're all individual. They've got no links. There's no dependencies between them. They're all unique objects. And since our file now has its own copy of those assets, later changes to the asset itself, our original source file, will not be reflected over here at all. Let's get rid of the appends. Super useful if you need to make adjustments and have a new unique file. Not so if you want to keep things updated. So we can see here that when we are either linking or packed, we still have that link back to the original file, which is really, really important, especially when you've got lots of assets and you do an update. Next, let's move on to our linked copy. What's happening here? Well, simply the asset is linked to the current Blender file and is read only. We can move its position in the world, which is super useful, but we cannot change anything else about it. Only its transforms. So its scale, its rotation, and its position in the world. But there is a fundamental difference between a linked asset and a packed asset. Even though if we hover over here or look at the manual, we'll see that this is also a linked data block. However, if the original file goes missing because it's packed into this scene, it's not going to go missing as well. It's going to retain all the properties because we packed everything into the scene. And then if we force an overwrite, if we go to this drop down in the outliner, go down to Blender file, we can see those links and we can refresh them. And that's what's going to refresh everything here as well. So when we import that packed file, it's linked data just like before, but that asset is going to remain available even if the original library is modified or becomes unavailable, which is why it doesn't update straight away. We have to force that overwrite, which is why as we saw earlier, when we reopen the file, our linked one did in fact reload correctly with our green hat, but this one over here did not change at all. Now we understand the differences between the various imports. Let's have a look at how we can go ahead and edit things. Now to keep this nice and fresh, I'm gonna remove these from the scene because we've been playing around with them. I'm gonna change this back to view layer and we're also gonna just tidy everything up on there as well. So under import settings, I'm going to do a linked one just over here and let's also do a packed one. And you'll notice when we do a packed one and bring it in, it has a slightly different symbol here. We've got the link symbol, and then we have a packed symbol. Now, if we have a look at the packed object itself, if we go to the totem, if we right click on this, go to library override and make a library override, whatever is selected, we can see it snaps to the middle. And if we have a look back at the hierarchy, that chain linked icon that we had before now has an arrow through it to say that there is a library override in effect. 
However, if we drill down a little deeper, let's have a look at the cube. If we drill down a little deeper, we can still see that some of this data is packed and therefore it's still going to be linked to the previous thing. And the same will be true if we do the same to the linked assets. If we do a library override and do it to everything selected, we're going to move to the middle of the scene. So we're going to have to be careful here about what we're actually looking at. We can't move anything yet. If you do try and move something, you'll notice that it looks like you can perhaps move it because we've got a delta appearing at the top. It's changing its position it's not really changing at the moment because we've not said to the individual objects that you can do that so we've got these two areas moving on from here it's going to be pretty much the same so i'm going to hide one of these out of the way and then we can only see one of these now if we click on these we can now click on the individual elements which is fantastic but we can't do anything to them yet we would have to say to the cube hey i want to be able to move you around so with the cube selected i can right click do a library override and again make the selected one have a library override now i can position the cube over here but crucially what we should find is if that we go back to the original and update anything the cube should update with everything apart from its position will no longer update because we've essentially broken that link. Let's go test that. I'm going to save this file and make ourselves dual screen again. Excellent. Now the top hat's in the way, so I'm going to grab my cube down here and just change its color. I'm going to make sure that I save it. It is critical that you save. Um, I can see the asterisk at the top has gone. So now when we come back over here, let's make this large again. If we go up to the top, to the drop down, go to our Blender file, we can see those links again. If I reload those links, we can see that this color has indeed updated. And that would also apply to the mesh data if we updated that as well. Because if we go back to our view layer, we can see that our mesh data is intact, it's linked, and our material is intact, it is still linked. Now, one of the things to bear in mind here is this could get quite complex knowing what you've overridden and what you haven't. Well, this is very simple. There's another option here, and you may have already caught it, called Library Overrides. If we go ahead and click on that, we can see exactly which objects in our scene have an override on them and what that override happens to be. So we've got our location and it's been updated and we can actually change that over here if we needed to. I probably wouldn't use this area to change the location, but that just gives you the values of the override themselves, what's being applied to our objects in our scene. Now, the other thing that I do want to test really quick is whether or not just swapping out some mesh data itself. So we've got our hat on our object here. If I go ahead and simply go to my party hat, go to its mesh data, which we know is linked still apparently, let's test it. And I'm gonna swap the mesh data out for the top hat and notice here that they've got fake users so I don't accidentally lose any of that. So we've got a very distinguished monkey here wearing his hat, fantastic. Now, if we go back to our scene after saving, of course, and go to our blender file, go to our assets, right click and reload, we can see that that comes in as well. And this is absolutely fantastic. We're now able to bring things over into Blender, linked from our assets and be able to update them and make them unique where we need to. And there we go, both nightmares completely solved. Link or pack for updates, library override for any unique edits and append for those one-time copies. You now know more about Blender's asset system than people who have used it for years. If this has saved you hours of frustration, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you want more tutorials like this, and I'll see you all in the next one.